Okay, so welcome back to another video. Here we are given a um, number theory problem that states, given for x and y are natural numbers, we want to find a maximum natural number z such that x to the power y factorial divided by x to the power z is a natural number. And so this is nice mainly because the way we want to approach this is that we are actually given the choice of x, y being um, rash, um, nat natural numbers. And we want to plug our choices of natural numbers into the following um, expression term right here. Find some z so that it actually satisfies the natural number itself. As you can tell, if we're asking to find the, ma the maximum of some natural number z, so with the choices of x, y being natural numbers, so that has to mean that there has to be some sort of close form to find for z such that we are free to able to choose whatever natural number x and y is. So that's basically the takeaway on how to understand and approach this. We're going to um, choose a couple order pairs for um, x and y that are both natural numbers analyze and um, establish some sort of relationship on how it's behaving and what we can do to find the maximum z to the point where we can actually find a little close form for any sort of natural number x, y, of course, satisfying that this um, term is a natural number. So other than that, I have nothing else to add, so let's just jump in. So let's actually first start off with, um, for example, we'll let um, x equals 2 and then we'll let y equals four. We're just choosing um, natural numbers. And keep in mind that um, this isn't necessarily we're using prime numbers. Um, eventually when I say that, because the next um, two other tries that I'm going to choose for numbers, they may sound, they're gonna sound like I'm choosing prime numbers, but it's not, it's natural numbers. Eventually when we're just establishing what we're gonna do, you're gonna see that um, this comes, this is actually probably the, I guess the easiest choice to use when trying to find the maximum for z as we go across each of the methods of um, solving so. So x equals 2, y equals 4, let's just plug this back to our numerator right here. So 2 to the power 4 factorial, that is, um, that will be 16 factorial, right? So of course that's just, you know, factorial is just a product of the n natural numbers, 16. So if you actually expanded this and solved this out and apply um, some prime factorization, you'll get the following um, expression, or products rather. We'll have that this is two to the power 15, multiply with three to the power six, multiply by uh, five to the power seven, then multiply by 11, and then multiply by 13. And of course with this being um, the, um, factorials as a product of natural numbers, then you would see that this indeed, this expression itself is a natural number. So what you'll notice is that with this given expression, we have x to the y factorial and then x to some um, x to the power z. Since we said that x equals two, so that's our base, we'll notice that from this right-hand expression, there's a base two over here, so the exponent uh, 15 over here. So irregardless, we can just divide two to the 15 to both sides of the equation. So this will just leave out with this product. Of course, it still preserves the fact that this number is still indeed a natural number, so that's okay. So dividing by both sides, we would have that um, two to the power four factorial then divided by 2 to the power 15 that is still a natural number and we can come to the conclusion and say that the number z the natural number z is equal to 15 um, that's one example to try so let's actually try more numbers let's actually try um, say x equals 3 and uh, y is equal to 2 so let's switch to a different marker for this example so I'll let x equals um, 3 and we'll let y equals 2. Okay, so we just plug this back in, same as before. So we have 3 square factorial that is equal to 9 factorial. If you just do the same thing, apply the prime factorization, we'll get over here, this is just 2 to the power 7. Uh, multiply with 3 to the power 4, multiply by 5, multiply by uh, 7. That's indeed still a natural number. And we'll notice that um, there's a bit th throughout this prime factorization, there's a base three that we set x equals um, three to. So we can actually just divide three to the power four to both sides. Of course, after that division, it'll still preserve that the fact that it is still a natural number. So doing so, three square factorial and then divided by three to the power um, four, that is still a natural number. And we have we can see that um, m or I mean z for this is um, equal to four. 
Let me um just underline what we have just to establish what we've solved. So we have that z is equal to 15. If we set that x and y is equal to four over here, we have that z is equal to four. If we set x equals three and y is equal to two over here, let's try out one more number and see what we can actually establish. So for this last example, um, you can do this, again, you can actually do this as many um, times as you want with possible combinations of natural numbers for x and y, but I'm just sticking at three. So eventually, if you just keep going, we're gonna analyze that there's indeed a little pattern here. So let's, let's try one more. We're gonna let x equals five, and we'll let y equals two. So just plug this back into here. So now we would have five square factorial, that's equal to 25 factorial. Um, the prime factorization over here is gonna be a long one here. So let's see. Um, okay, so here we have, we have 22, or two to the 22 power, multiplied by three to the 10, multiply by five to the six, multiply by seven to the third. I'm just going to the next line. Um, multiply by 11 square, multiply with 13, multiply by 17, multiply by 19, and then multiply by 23. And of course, yes, that is still a natural number. So we have five square factorial. We notice that there's a five associated with the prime factorization from here. So I can just divide that by both sides with five to the power six. So we have five square factorial divided by five to the six, still a natural number. And of course, indeed, we can see that Z is equal to six. Okay, so another one in the books. So we have X equals Y, is, um, X equals five and Y is equal to two. We just showed that we, um, throughout all this, we get that Z is equal to six. And again, keep doing this many times and then you'll see a little pattern here that um, it's actually really interesting. So let's actually analyze um, the first section for x equals two and y is equal to four. So you'll notice that um, for associating with two to the four with 16, if we're looking at this in terms of the multiples of two to the power z, in this case, um, what we're looking at from all of that goes from two to the four that uh, we stop at that 16 over here. So if we look at this in terms of multiples, then we see that um, if we set here, so we have two to the power one, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3, and then 2 to the power 4. These numbers of the multiples can go into 16. Um, well, not go into 16. These are the um, multiples that can for 16 specifically. So for 2 to the 1, uh, multiples are, are defined as follows. For 2 to the power 1, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, 10, 12, 14, and 16, right? Okay. Then two square is four, so it can go into four, then eight, then 12, then 16. Then two to the power third, that's eight, so it can go into eight, and it's a multiple for 16. And then two to the power four, that's 16, so that's just by its own. Then you'll notice is that um, there is a total of eight multiples over here for associated with two to the power one. So it's, it's eight. Over here is we have four, over here we have two, and then over here we have one. So if we notice, if we pay attention, if we were to add up these, um, the multiples for each of the two to the power n multiples, so we add up eight, four, two, and one, what do we get? We get that we have a total of 15 multiples. So we have 15 multiples, but notice that that's what z is equal to, okay. That's just one. Let's try, um, that's one discussion, that's actually one observation to make specifically for this set over here that's um, written in red. Let's try um, for um, two to the power, or for x equals three and then y is equal to two. We have x to three, so we have this in terms of three to the power z multiples for multiples of three to the power z. Then we see that we can go up to three to the power one and three square. So we have three to the power one and then three square, okay? So three can go into nine over here, so the multiples of would be three, six, and then nine, and then three squares, so that's just nine, okay? So then that means if we count up the multiples for each of with the um, three to the powers, Z, so for three to the first power and then three to the second, we have that there's a total of three for associating with three to the first, and then we only have one so we add up these, we get that this is, there's four multiples. Then notice that uh, we just showed that z is equal to four, so there's some correlation. 
okay? Something similar over here. Then if we do the same thing over here, I'm not gonna um, show that work for that. You can clearly see that if you actually apply that same method. So if you go from, five, so we have five and then um, to the power two, then you just do, well, actually I can, I can do this technically. It's actually pretty short since there's only um, five square. Okay, so we have um, five to the power one and then five square. If we're looking at this from, um, Five to the power z of of its multiples from here it can go into 25 so here we have so 5 10 15 uh 20 and then 25 and then for five squares just 25 then we just add up the multiples over here let's see because you know this there's five here and over here is one then we just take that sum of these multiples over here associated for you know back from above then we get that there's a total of six multiples but guess what that's what we just solved for for z is equal to six after we just plug in for um, finding the maximum for our choices of the natural numbers six multiples right so you th there's there is um something going on with the pattern so now if you now as mentioned you can keep doing this as many times as you want with a combination of natural numbers of course and then there's um after doing so, you're actually going to notice the following, which um, this is the this is the fun part right here. So over here, if after with um, doing many times for different choices for x, y to find your z um, from this whole discussion that we just you know went over and then choosing over, we'll notice that I'm gonna so I'm gonna write it this way. I'll write this as a pound symbol for denoting numbers, and then numbers of m, the lowercase m denoting for you know multiples. So specifically, if we're looking at this for a number of multiples for um, of x to the power one, we'll have a little nice close form for finding the multiples for this um, with this um, degree on top. So we'll have that this is just x to the power y divided by x, or in other words, just simplify it out. We have x to the power y minus one. Okay. Now number of number of multiples of x to the power two. So then this is just x to the power y then divided by x squared. Literally, you can actually just check this all yourself. This is actually, this is why we're trying to find the pattern and then freely choosing numbers and then discussing what's the correlation here. So simplifying this out, we'll have that this is just x to the power y subtract two. Numbers, n, multiples of n for x to the power three. It's just x to the y divided by x cubed equal to x to the power y minus three. Okay, keep going so on so forth. If we do this for um, numbers of multiples of um, x to the power y subtract one, then that's just equal to um, x to the y divided by x to the y minus one. Then that's just equal to x to the power one. And then one more for um, the multiples of x to the power y then it's just equal to x to the power y divided by x to the power y and that's just equal to x to the power zero so that would have that of course associating with each of the degrees and that's why we take those sum of those multiples and that's how we get rc so if we apply that same method that means we're taking the we're adding all the sums of these numbers of multiples over here so otherwise now we have that this is x to the power zero then um well i'll write it like this i'll write this as z is equal to z is equal to x to the power zero plus x to the power one plus x to the power two keep going on so forth add this with x to the power uh y subtract two and then add this with x to the power y subtract one set that equal to you notice that this is a sum so we can write this as a um a partial sum with our um, starting term being k is equal to zero and then our upper index with y subtract one of x to the power k but you can actually see that you could just apply the partial geometric series at the y minus one term and you see that if you do a little bit of rearrangement you'll see that our final answer for um, finding a closed form the maximum of z is actually just equal to x to the power y subtract one divided by x subtract one like so and so there we have it let me write it like this um, I underlined the or I draw a box for z, a z then the box indicates that z is equal to this closed form over here for finding a maximum numbers satisfying the following equation that indeed that it is a natural number so yeah there we have it there's a lot of, um really interesting going on here so i think this is really neat for um in if you're trying to do problems where you have to do a little like guess and check this is actually a perfect example so yeah 
that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.